Okay, YouTube being fun again. God damn, why is this being so weird? There we go. Okay, cool. We'll look at that. Right, where's my camera? Let's move this off. Move this up here. Let me get my epic pen working as well. Epic pen. Turn the alert box on as well. Where's my light box? Cool. Oh, Elk Battery. I didn't realize you didn't follow. And Dustin, thanks for following. I appreciate it. Cool, we are and Lord Salem out. and Golax123, <laughs> T1 Davi. Uh, yeah, sorry, folks. I have my alert box turned off. Um, that's actually really loud. Maybe I should. Maybe I should turn that sound. <laughs> Is that okay? Whatever, it'll be fine. <laughs> Bro, T1. Um, so the reason I'm doing this one is because there's some really interesting Santa stuff going on. And because there's interesting Santa stuff, there's interesting stuff to talk about. If that makes sense to you all. Is it auto? God damn, why is this quality so bad? Okay, is there anything interesting to talk We'll get through first first bands and then we'll, we'll see if there's anything interesting to talk about from that. Means VODs without uh, YouTube Premium, like it. Oh, that's so stupid, man. That's so. I hate people who do shit like this. It's really annoying. Okay, so we've had. Okay, this is gonna be so strange. Ah, okay, so. Faker is really important to T1 because he wins both sides of the Ariana Azir matchup. He's the best player of that matchup in the world right now, and Azir is the best champion in mid lane. Pretty much everyone prefers taking the Azir. In LCK, you do see a lot of Ariana, don't get me wrong. Um, but, um, like, this means that T1 can can go towards different styles of team compositions, knowing that they're always going to have pressure mid lane. Um, heck, what was the... It was the Telecom War where um, Faker was having some really close 1v1s against um, BDD's Azir. He's one of the best in the world at that. So this actually makes this a really valid first pick from T1. They get to choose their side of the, the Ariana Azir matchup. And he gets so much value out of it that, it that it justifies it. I don't think you would first pick Orianna for anyone else in the world easily. I'm not saying you can't, but you wouldn't do it easily. Um, yeah. So then what's your answer on the other side, right? Okay, well, Santa's, Santa's been, like, such a hugely warping pick. That's That makes sense. But then you hold... So this is interesting, right? And this is what I want to see this series. I want to see more teams do this. Because Senna doesn't have to be paired with Time Kench. It doesn't have to be. You do have other champions you can play it with. So you can hold that until 3, you can hold it until later as well, you can flex things around. And then obviously you're picking the other side of the Oriana or Azir matchup. So they don't choose to... When you're picking on 1-2, sometimes you counter the first pick, or like, you answer the first pick. The Azir's not a counter to Oriana, but it's an answer, right? But um, you can either blind both of them and just get two power picks, um, or you can counter and then try and hide as much as you can. This is hiding quite a lot, on the whole. So then you get the um, you see the you see the you see the center locked in, and you say, okay, well, you have to flex your champion pool to have something that can play against the most lane dominant two v two that there is in isolation. Like that ain't that ain't easy, folks. That ain't easy. Speed this up. What's the third pick? Do they choose to use... Okay, so they choose to use their flexibility a little bit now. This is now a flex between... Because T1 have already played this as well. This is a flex between bot and top lane. It's a flex between bot, well, bot and top lane. That's... That's something that T1 will have to keep in mind. So now the question is, do they ban top lane or... Um, if you ban top lane or supports, then you're potentially allowing um, OK to kind of... Uh, the Brion to kind of go... Get away from your bands by just flexing this champion into the role that you've banned out. So that's one of the very powerful things about Senna. It allows you to play different champions in those roles. So instead, they go towards jungle because they feel like they can't really ban out top or support because the Orn's already a flex between the two of them. Okay. Brion also banning out junglers, so it's loads of bans on junglers. Loads of them, actually. But this is going to be a problem for... Bro, I actually don't understand it from this side. Because you're locking out... If you are playing against Caitlyn Lux, the big thing about Caitlyn Lux is you need to get on top of them. You are hyper outranged by Caitlyn Lux Oriana. And yes, you do have the Orn for backline access and you have the Senna ult flying over it, but you need a way onto the backline. You would have loved a Rel. Rel would have been fantastic for you. I get that banning out the Nocturne also denies the Nocturne Oriana, but you would have loved the Rel on 4. I'm really surprised that they didn't have that. Because also what the Rel would do is allow... If Imagine if you have um, Rel and you have Orn. Then what you can do is you can flex this towards um, top lane or support. 
This can go towards jungle or support. So that means you have three roles you can flex between, depending on matchups. And don't get me wrong, T1 can probably force you into some bad matchups either way. But then you'd have double backline access flexed between three roles. That would be so insane. And they haven't even banned out the Tom Kench if you if you really want to um, go towards that in terms of like the center um, disengage kind of stuff. And you play for long range backline. You need backline access. And the jo <sighs> Jarvan's taken away from the Ori. And it is really good with the Orn. But I just feel like Rel is a better version of Jarvan here, isn't it? Why did he ban out the Rel? Rel is just a better version of Jarvan. Jarvan feels like. And you can flex them up until last pick. <laughs> Have we seen a pro game of Briar yet? Don't think so. Cassante is really good for T1. If you try and engage through him, he just presses W. It's really annoying. And it's really good versus the Orn too. He's very good in tank versus tank. And then the Poppy stops the Jarvan going in. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a problem. And you're giving last pick to um, Morgan for his Aatrox. So then the Orn goes towards support because it wants to avoid... This This Orn now feels kind of meh. You need to survive lane, which you won't. You're hyper outranged. The bonus is um, it's quite hard for both of these two on the front line for T1 to deny all three of these getting an engage. So if you don't get blasted early, there's a chance you find a miracle flank engage. But I am quite sad that Bro didn't actually make the most of that. Yeah, I'm quite sad that they didn't make the most of that. That's that's not great. Can we go towards 1080 now? That'd be nice. Okay. okay then. Let's get in. Let's move my camera back. Can I can I move this back? Thanks. Where's my camera going? Um. There we go. Nice. LP LOL versus Brand? Oh, LP LOL is like tier 2. So we haven't seen it in tier 1. I haven't seen it in tier 1. Right. Hmm. YouTube has not given me these issues until today, actually. Part partly it'll be due to the length of the VOD, honestly. Jesus Christ! Hang on, I'm gonna I'm gonna check if there's anything else eating up my CPU because this is like insane, actually. God damn! Let me get a let me get rid of that. I'll close Discord as well. That's a good point. Um. Okay. Hopefully this will survive now. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. So let's have a talk about win conditions and have a think about what we're looking for. I'm just gonna put these down briefly. I might not keep them here forever. Um. Smash lane. Smash lane is big there. Smash lane, smash lane outrange. This is this is the strength of their composition, right? They can win these lanes and they can um, they can really outrange later. Um, survive lane. Um, engage from two screens away. They want to really shut down this Caitlyn if they can. But that's largely what the win conditions are, right? You need to not lose your tower too early versus the Caitlyn Lux. You want to stop them from pushing. Owner probably just wants to hit level 3 and put loads of wards on the bot side of the map, so we'll keep an eye out for that. This is important from Faker, actually. This is important. He just gets a ward down earlier to stop her, um, to stop Gideon having some cheese level 2 ganks or, or, or seeing which direction he's farming in. So you know that he's heading towards bot lane, but that was likely going to happen anyway. I'm turning into 1.5 because the video is really janky right now. Good initial wards. Okay, this is good as well, actually. You know, I'm going to point this out from Bro. Um, they have two wards kind of covering both jungle entrances here. Which means that owner's not going to get unseen um, unseen invade paths into, into the jungle. Because you're going to get pushed in by the Caitlyn Lux, right? If you look down at the minimap. So if you have them pushing in and then the Lux roaming up while the um, Poppy's invading, you lose the game because Gideon goes into bot side jungle, loses everything, and then um, and then the bot lane is just shoved under for forever because the jungle can never respond. So at least that's, those are some good starting wards from Bro. It gives um, Gideon a bit of time to do a reverse clear. So he takes a buff on the top side so he has red buff for combat stats and then he goes towards his bot side. 
problem is, if he reverse clears, he's not going to be able to hang around Bob, because he does want to get back to his top camp. Um, so what I mean by reverse clear is you start on one buff, you go down to the other buff, and then you end up kind of clearing back through your regular camps the other side of the map. That's typically what it means. Um, but if you're clearing towards top side there, that means that you can't really be on call towards bot side after all, after all of your camps are down. You're going to be sad at level 3, but you can't get towards level 4. So Ona manages to get towards bot side, Gideon's in lane, but he can't lane gank here. They're level 1 under tower. Yeah, Ona sees wolves, so he knows that Gideon's around. He doesn't have blue buff, that's fine. Gideon needs to be really careful here. Wall stunned. Okay. The thing is, um... The thing is, right, if both junglers are low HP, this favors T1, because T1 don't need junglers to save their lanes. Bro need Gideon to save their lanes. And, and he can't now, because he's low HP, and he's been forced out of his boss side jungle. Um, and don't- uh, and they've just- yeah, exactly, exactly that. Um, <laughs> you- <laughs> he- he goes topside, so that's kind of bad of Zayas, actually. I don't- his proxy- he should know that, um, Gideon's heading topside. That's- that's a mistake from Zayas. You can't full court press like this completely. Owner is not- if Owner is in topside jungle, you can do this, but he's stuck around boss side. But, um, bro need Gideon in every single lane, pretty much. Ah, uh, oh well. Yeah, that's that's a bit lazy from Zess. Um, he should know that Gideon is heading towards topside after he's been forced out of well, so. So Gideon's still on topside now. Ona needs to be doing this a lot. By the way, this is how T1 won worlds. They'd have a load of oppressive lanes and then Ona would just walk into the enemy jungle and bully enemy jungler. Um, you know, and he's completely safe doing this as well. But like, he's just making sure the enemy jungler can't go and save his lanes. So it means that T1 can brutalize you in lane. And it makes a lot of sense, right? I mean, how do you play as Senna Orn versus this Kate Lux? It's why I would have really liked the Rel, just to have some extra flexibility. Well, I guess you still have the... You still have the problem of, um... I mean, you could have picked you could have picked the Orn into the Cassante. That would have been fine. I actually think that maybe put... But then what do you save bot lane with? Maybe you could put Nila Senna and just look for an all-in. But that would have been super dangerous too. Could have gone Shogath Senna. Shogath Senna could have been okay. That's a pretty good lane dominant bot lane. If you misstep, the Chogath kind of just hits a Q on you. The Orn is great if you survive lane, I just don't think you will now. God damn, they're down a lot of CS. Okay. No flash or ults. Wait, did Karis run out of mana? Ooh, did Karis run out of mana? He's on a hundred... Oh no, he's- yeah, I think he was just out of mana. Wait, what's this mana cost of first rank ult? Is it a hundred? It might be a hundred. He might have been just out of mana, you know, folks. Sad. God damn, seven minutes turret coming up. That's insane. Yeah, that's um... Ooh, flash of flash. But like, how do you play this now? Gideon has not been able to get into this lane. Gideon needs to be in this lane. This is this is your win condition. You need to be able to shut down the Caitlyn Lux. You've not been able to. Gideon's forced to be on his top side permanently because Owner is completely harassing him on his bot side when he has um, mid. Owner has mid and bot pro. This is disgusting. This is really well played from T1. Like I think Bro made some mistakes, but this is this is not good from. Um, this is this is. Yeah, this is not good from Bro, don't get me wrong, but like, this is this is a well-played early game by T1. <clears throat> and now you're down an absurd amount, yes. Ulted through the wall. Ooh, Zayas, buddy. Happy gaming. The thing is, even with a 2 kill Aatrox, this is not enough on the top side of the map. I think, yeah, Zayas has, has been a bit disconnected because he needs to be the one which is a little more careful because Ona needs to be perma-hovering bot side. If you don't have eyes on Jarvan, then then this can happen. <clears throat> and you're not in a position right now where um, Cassante can uh, 1v2, or this is, yeah, which you can do it later into the game. Points, but not a lot right now. Wulu, thanks for the follow. Well, whoa, low. I'm gonna call it Wulu. Thanks for the follow, appreciate it. <clears throat> okay, so now you've even got three grubs from T1, which, oh god, you got grubs on Caitlyn? 
Oh, that is the worst possible scenario. This is this is awful for Bro. What happened before this? When did they spawn? They spawned for a while, right? So Gideon stays to kill Zeus. Oh, you needed to take these grubs away, man. This is unplayable now. It was bad before. So now you have this point where Caitlyn goes into other lanes across the map, right? And um, Caitlyn's now going to be hitting, hitting turrets for free, whether that's top lane or whether that's mid lane. And he's just going to be hitting there with extra damage on turrets. This is absolute. You, you can't allow this to happen. You can't wave clear this. You have Ornolt now, at least, but it's on a long cooldown at first rank. You know, they're at nine minutes and they're... They're at nine minutes and they're taking two turrets. Like, this is how Void Grubs are absolutely disgusting, by the way. Teams are starting to figure out that if you have lanes like... I mean, Tristana Milio was one that was played in LPL, but um, yeah, stuff like the Caitlyn Lux. Like, how do you play this? It doesn't even matter that he's gonna... He might live here, right? He forced this flash. Yeah, he lives. He can teleport back to this turret, but it just doesn't matter. The gold advantage is way too much now. This is this is textbook Caitlyn Lux. Textbook. Yeah, legit. <laughs> legit, Hulk. <laughs> Please let us FF. Legit. Uh, Sewer Cat, thanks for the follow. I appreciate it. <clears throat> oh my god, he has double the gold. I mean, hang on, let's, let's go back to that. I just want to see that screenshot real quick. It'll show up at the bottom. So you have... <laughs> Guys, <laughs> Guma has more gold than both Samva and Polo combined. <laughs> Between the two of them, they have 5,054 gold. Guma has 5,272. This Caitlyn has more gold than both of them, and the Lux has more gold than each of them, like individually, too. Jesus Christ. I don't even mind Senna, Senna Orn as a duo, but like, you can't play it into a Caitlyn Lux like this. And, and again, the, the, um, the unsung hero of this is Ona. Ona is very, very crucial to the way that T1 play League of Legends, because he ends up scouting the jungler so much that his lanes can always play hyper-aggressive. And T1's laners are some of the very best in the world. So, yeah. Full Stormraiser, Boots. Fucking Christ, this is insane. Carry a second in gold, yep. Been stacking support item, kills, and plates shared. Yeah, that's a very good point. He has a charrette. He has his first item before fake it does. Jesus, man. And Ona's doing, Ona's doing the right thing here again, of just getting into the enemy jungle and spotting where it's happening. Spotting, spotting where members are moving about. This is important because, actually this is important too, so he has phase rush which is really important as well. So if he picks a bad fight, he can run out as well. So he can walk in a battle ward and then just see, see what happens. He's not obligated to take fights. Um, the worry now is that you do have level 6 on Jarvan and your bot lane. Which means there is a chance now that even when you're super fed, you're caught out of position and you die. So T1 can't let up the pressure. That's the that's the fall, that's the pitfall of um, Caitlyn lanes. Where, um, ooh, damn. Close. The pitfall is that you think you're always ahead and you always have stats, but you always need to be protecting the Caitlyn. Always. If you mess, if you misstep on the Caitlyn, then um, you still die. You give up a huge shutdowns at that point. Actually, speaking of shutdowns, how the hell do Guber and Carrion not have shutdowns? How do they not have shutdowns? Yeah, they might actually get 15 plates, yeah. Yeah, they should do. They should do, 100%. Oh, goddamn. Again, you don't actually need to kill the opponents you, from the Caitlyn Lux. You just need to make sure that they can't stand under turret and wave clear. Getting towards six grubs now as well, so now they have the Zerg Rush. Like the full Zerg Rush. <coughs> plates don't affect the shutdowns? Oh, really? Huh. I thought it was just all gold income, because I remember Draven passive used to affect it as well. Hmm. Okay. Ooh, doesn't quite get the tower shot. Senna ult. Late teleport from Faker. Okay. Okay, the fact that they get a kill back there in a 4v3, or a 3v... Um, was that a 4v3? Yeah, in a 4v3 they managed to get a get a kill back. That's insane, actually. 
<clears throat> I'm not going to slow that down too much. Because, um... The micro of that play doesn't matter too much. Flash for flash. Carrier feels completely safe to do that. I mean... Hmm. There's a bit of a worry there, but because, I mean, Gideon's going to have ult before you have your flash back up. Okay, thanks, thanks, Al. That's, that's, uh... It's a good thing to know. I, re I do vaguely remember that patch note now. I just couldn't remember exactly how that was, um, worked out. I think, I don't know how many attacks I'm given how little auto attacking he probably has been able to do. I don't think it's going to be very, uh, inspiring. In that case, actually, the Caitlyn and Lux are getting so many plates but not getting kills somewhat helps them, because the way that Bro would like to come back into this game is by killing the Caitlyn Lux, getting a boatload of gold from shutdowns, and then um, kind of roll, steamrolling back into the game. If they don't even have shutdowns because they all have taken his plates, that actually helps them. <laughs> uh, Shuzi, thanks for the follow, by the way. I, um, I missed that earlier. Poppy ult, secure the dragon, completely fine. Bro can't look for a fight. They can't look for a fight where the fight isn't about the Caitlyn Lux and they shut them down. They have Herald, they're going to take two charges on this. Oh, this is important, this is actually important. We'll, we'll slow this one down, because this is, how, this is how Bro want to get back into the game. So you're looking for the big engage, but the problem is you just use double flashes. I mean, probably just change this flash out, but you don't have flashes on two of your initiators going into a long-range backline. Morgan and Zeus both have teleport. So you're losing this turret, the route comes through, but nothing hits. Faker doesn't have flash, so he's dead. I want to say now. You can probably still run this back, you know? Ah, with a Zeta, you can't. Okay, they get one kill for this. Do they get two? Ooh, good charge. God, they lose one back. That was their moment, man. Ah, God. No flash on Karis until he just came back, uh, until he died as well. You should be getting... Even with the one for none, you feel bad. With a one for one, it's disastrous, actually. The murder Lux. Oh, he's got the Solstice Slay, that's why he's fast. And Shirelia's too. I actually didn't realize that plates were not a part of shutdowns, so it would make sense given these calculations, because oh my god, Grim and Kara should have shutdowns. But that's surprising to me. I feel like I feel like they should I think plates should be in that equation. Yeah, Ona can't stop the charge. He's already gone, so he's actually not part of that fight. That's kind of hilarious. They take two turrets from this either way, though. And because um, Caitlyn... Oh, that's another thing, too. So with the new Herald... With the new Herald... Actually, is it going to show on here? I want to see if it... Um, the Does the inner turret die from this? Does it die? Because what the people who take the Herald get value from the Herald gold. No, so the Herald does the, the okay, mid lane inner turret doesn't die from this. But if you take part in killing the Herald, you get an empowered recall once. And then you also get some of the gold from the whatever towers the Herald kills. Worth noting that. So Guma would have got full gold from that if that would have been using the ult steel rub that's hilarious, man. Fire cannon on Caitlyn. Yeah. At this point there's no armor built up, no significant armor built up, there's a couple of tabbies. Okay, no okay, no, there is a frozen heart. But like there's not enough tank stats for Caitlyn to not to, to care about not having armor pen just yet. She's so strong. And with Stormraiser... <sighs> Dude... That flash is really important. That flash is really important. <laughs> oh god. You need that flash. You need it really bad, man. God. Um Shizu I called out already. Seeker, Skim and San uh, Santanox. Thanks for the followers, by the way. Hey, thanks, Fed. I appreciate it. Yeah, I know, the, the co-streams have been really popping off, and I really appreciate everyone for tuning in and, um, and seeing the cast that Sam and I are doing for them. 7,000 gold lead at 19 minutes, Jesus. Carrier really wants his luck skin? Yeah, for sure. Ah, yeah, okay, so this is important, right? Let's, ha let's have a look at where everyone is on the map from, um, from T1. So you have Ona here helping a bit. You have a teleport from Faker, which he doesn't really want to pull. 
you have both of these big long range alts coming up and you don't have vision on oh no how the hell did getting get here out of vision because he's not been seen i guess there's only a that's just scuttle shrines that's not the that's not the biggest bit of vision I have to say this is this is a pretty good vision line from from T1. They shouldn't get caught out like this. I think the problem is like they don't they don't have this corridor uh, completely covered, right? So if you walk in like this, you're out of vision. So they need either like a ward in um, here or a proper ward instead of a blue ward in here, or like the blue ward slightly further to the edge of the brush, because that's how Gideon gets out of vision here. Because now this is probably a Caitlyn dead if they pull the ults. Huh. No, okay, so they're fine. He, oh no, he's still out of vision. No, there's a real chance that Caitlyn dies here. Goom is, Goom is alone. Goom is alone, yeah. Yeah, he just, yeah. He just uses E as well. Yeah, he's doomed, man. Yeah, so all of this is... So this looks pretty bad from T1. You think, oh, they've just left the Caitlyn alone in mid lane. The big problem is that they didn't manage to get this corridor warded because there was no other way that they get in, right? Because you're not coming in through bot side because there's a warden, there's a warden bot side um, tribrush. It's just this one corridor. That's the only way that they can get into that vision pocket. Ah, man. Gonna do the top esports review also? Yeah, I am actually. Yeah, I am. I think that's, I think that's a good series to go through. But this, this, <laughs> I mean, the the flash is bad from Goomer, and the E is bad. He still dies 100% anyway. But the fact that they're still dying, they're still dying, like, one for one when they should be getting clean fights, is so disgusting. They can't get a clean kill. Oh, that sucks for bro. This is a good game from T1. This is a really good game from them. Um, their vision control has been so oppressive. This is the only angle they've had for like 10 minutes, folks. Like, they've not been able to get anywhere close to the Caitlyn Lux lane because Ona has just ran into Gideon's jungle and just messed with him. It's one of Ona's biggest strengths. Oh, Santanox, thanks for the thanks for the sub. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And Virtuoso Blades as well. Thanks for the follow. I should probably put my alert box back on. Wait, is my alert box off? When's the T1 Gen G banner? Bang, you mean for um for the LCK CL for Challenger? I don't know actually. Aren't they? The, yeah, are they both like one and five in series? That's hilarious. And now you're out of vision when Baron's being started. You have ults back up for everyone but Senna. Trap line. T1 are kind of. Hmm. It's a bit lazy. They actually could have been... They could have actually had a load of ults thrown at Baron and then it dies. They're lucky they turn for the fight, they get a pick. But there's a chance that all of the ults get thrown onto Baron and there's a steal. And then Bro potentially can find a way to wave clear. But still, they, they, they went out. They look for the fight on a good timing. They turn when the Baron's on about 3-4k HP, which is, in fairness, quite hard for Bro to burst through. But like, if you throw every ult at, um, at the Baron, there's a chance that, that you get the steal from that kind of HP from Bro. It's hard for them to know, but... Oh, Gen T1 already won versus Gen G? That's U5? Damn, okay. Fair. Yeah, Zayas is having a happy game, folks. <laughs> He's having a happy game. <laughs> oh, God. Well, lucky for him, it doesn't actually matter whether he's ahead or not. Like, he just needs to be Cassante, just pressing W in the front line. Baron's not actually been taken, though. It's quite dangerous for him to be alone, though. Caitlyn's coming back out onto the map. There's a shockwave. Hang on, let's, let's slow this down now. Let's slow this down. So you have a load of alts, but you're not using them on Caitlyn. If you... So Onus wall stuns him, which means that he's not going to get his follow-up auto very easily. Karis doesn't have flash to follow up with a shuffle. Morgan's in a good spot, but you're not using anything on Caitlyn. There's a chance that Caitlyn... Oh, good stopwatch. And that kept that stopwatch about his time for, for Guma to get into the fight. And he ha... <laughs> yeah. Okay, look at this though, man. Look how much time they buy. So then, Faker's here, stood in the step past presence. You can't even dash in easily as the Orn or something like that. Or, um, or the Azir. Stopwatch buys time for- just look how much that single auto does on Samva. Suddenly he's out of the fight. He doesn't have flash. He can't- if you have flash as center, you might be able to position around here. Look for autos around this kind of area. Stay away from the Caitlyn. And then eventually flash over the wall or something like that. But because you don't have flash, you have to go this way, which means you're out of the fight now. Carrier has a great angle for his ult as well, for everything. 
And then, yeah, Caitlyn gets to clean up, which is fun. Oof. Three-man Caitlyn Q, three-man Luxol. God, that hurts, man. People forget how bad um, Caitlyn Q damages people. It's absolutely insane. Because you kill him with that. Ooh, that's a good Q. That's a really good ward Q, actually. Samvus saves his life with that. It might not even matter, but... Damn, son. Yeah, that is that was a fair game of League of Legends, folks. Let's go into games two like straight away, actually. Yeah, let's go into straight game two straight away, and we'll do the series. Then I'll probably go grab myself a drink and give a quick brain break, and then we'll get onto the next thing that we want to do. Okay, so we have changed sites. We have the same bands. Oh yeah, Faker's Cork is is ruining. Yeah, Faker also wins the Corky matchups of pretty much everything in mid lane too. That's really nasty. But think how hard it is to play. I mean, in the case of someone like Karras in mid lane, it, you know he's not a top tier mid laner. But even on the top tier mid laners, right? Um, you've got a couple of champions which are really really hard to give over to T1. You don't want to give Ori, Azir, or Corky. These three champions, like you don't really want to give over because Faker is disproportionately good at these matchups than most people are. I don't think he's fantastic at all of the other matchups all the time. But these three champions in any kind of face up against each other, Faker just tends to win. Um, so you ban away the Corky and just say, look, we can give over the Aurea, the Azir, we can choose one side of that matchup. Um, but that's just a real problem when you're facing up against this guy in draft right now. He's the best player at the world of the Oriana, which, yeah. But they ban it first. Now that's interesting. Huh, that is interesting. Because I had just assumed that Faker would be just happy to take both sides of the matchup. Hmm. Unless they're afraid of, like, Ori pick one and then a knockdown on 2-3, which they can't really take away. Weird. Okay. That is strange. Okay, so now they're locking in the center, which makes sense. This is limit testing game. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll get into that. But yeah, I, was, I just saw the drafts, and I just wanted to see how both teams handled the center. Okay, so, they, okay, so if they're looking for... This now makes sense. This now makes sense. Because if you're picking Talia, then you don't want to play into Orianna. Orianna shreds Talia. You actually can't play the lane. As soon as um, Ori hits 6, Talia can't play this lane. You walk up to Q the lane, and he just he just walks at you. Okay. Tristan to um, Talia is, is a pretty good matchup for Tristana too, but it's not it's not quite as oppressive as the Ori. Okay, so now you have um, now you have double AD carry comp, solid frontline in the rail, which will bring your initiation from jungle or from um, from support. You're gonna need a frontline from T1 pretty badly that can deal with the double AD carries, and that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense because what you can do with eh, I would have preferred the Sage actually, because either way the Vi and the Sejuani allow the Talia to kind of get a free combo. <coughs> Vi has better ways out of a fight, I suppose, but I don't know. I feel like Sidrani would have been better than the Vi, though, right? Maybe it's easier to shut down the Tristana as the Vi. You can buffer out of the Vi ult, but, um, yeah. So now they ban out. Unless they were afraid of playing against the Vi. Okay. So the Orn, yeah, in fact, actually the Orn would have been really nasty from um, the side of T1. So they banned that out, but they picked the, they picked the, they picked the most lane dominant center pairing in the center Neela, which would have been really nasty, because if you lose through the bot side, then things are just over. And they ban out the premier engaged tank from the center um, side of this too. I think if this had been like a, a, a set, an Orn, if they wanted to go towards another tank and the sign was banned as well, I actually don't think, again, like Cho'Gath is bad, right? Because then Va if Varus ever gets hit by a Cho'Gath Q, then you you die. So that would have been an okay pairing here as well. It's cool. it's, it's fun. It's fast. It's iron. You can buffer, I did it recently. Yes, you can. You can buffer Tristana out of Vile. It's just quite hard timing. In fact, I think I remember Perks not doing that very well in a game recently. <laughs> you go for the Gragas. Is that Gragas Jungle? It's Gragas Jungle, Rel, Bot, right? So it's Varus, Rel? Hmm. Okay. Okay, and then you have this X. So you have turbo long range engage. So picture this now, right? Um, this guy flies in from two screens away. 
This person flies in from two screens away. This person ults in from like half a, half the map away. This guy ults from the other side of the map behind everyone, and this guy's running along like a train as well. Literally, they all just zero in on a target and they engage from a million miles away. That's really funny. This is a great comp. I love it. <laughs> this is so funny, actually. <laughs> There's gonna be one poor motherfucker on the other side who's out of position, and then five champions just blink onto their screen. <laughs> Get into game already. Come on, show us the game. Let me get my camera back. There we go. Cool. <clears throat> hey, Harold, how's it going? Right, anything interesting in runes? Spellbook on the Scion, that makes sense. Grasp tops. Dark Harvest on Gragas Jungle. God, remember when... This says something, right? Guys, when was the last time that you saw Predator as a rune? You, we're never seeing Predator again, by the way, folks. We're never seeing it again. It's just gone for forever. <laughs> and also, we see the on-hit Varus as well, which means you can actually kill some of the tank frontline a little easier with um with the Varus. Even though poke Varus is better into laning phase most of the time, the the on-hit Varus is just really too important versus killing the frontline. <clears throat> hey, Pingu, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. And seven, seven four, seven four, seven, four eight seven. Thanks for the follow. Now, why is my alert box not going off? Oh, did I silence it again? Maybe that's why. Oh, I did. I'm bad. Okay, my alert box is... Now it's back on. So now everyone is... Oh, God, is this going to go on for forever? It might, in fact, go on for forever. I, yeah, it's... Yeah. I. This is what happens when I silence my alert box and then it comes back online. So, funnily enough, a lot of my... Um, a lot of my sub emotes and my, not sub emotes, but like sub sounds um, are actually with Atlas <laughs> because he shouted me out on stream a couple of times back at the start of my career, which was really fun. This is why Zach is super busted, by the way. Zach is super busted um, at um, at um, killing tanks in tank versus tank. Like Zach almost always wins out. When you get up towards level six, I'm sure that Cassandra can have something to say about it, but it's just so annoying. What is he doing, man? <laughs> He's just annoying the shit out of him. So this is hilarious because this is normally what Ona does, right? Ooh, God, close. But yeah, there you go. There are the shoutouts that I missed. So. August said we don't want Predator in the game, but if we remove it, people will complain, so we keep it really bad. Who's going to complain about it, though? I don't think I've seen Predator in forever. I mean, I get why it's bad for the game, because it means that your response time to a play is absolutely nuts. Oh no, buddy. Ooh! Does he ca- does he- wait, wait, does he manage to- let's- let's slow this down. So he gets the body slam out. Oh, but Ona just- Ona gets a awkward flash there, where he actually gets hit by the E anyway. And he tags the E through the back of Morgan. Oh, that's so sad. Does he die anyway? He should die anyway, right? Oh, he doesn't even die? God, oh, that's so sad. Oh, now you've given doubles to Talia. Oh, that is so sad. Double kill and double buff to Faker, so then he can stick around with as much mana as, as, as he wants, right? Because the blue buff's going to keep him topped up. Oh, God, that is awful for them. Two assists for Zeus as well. This is a good pick from Ona, but, like, I mean, Gideon should have... He has double lane priority. You should, you should never feel sad as a jungler having double lane priority. But I guess Zeus chanking out in his own jungle gives him gives him the angle for this. Oh, that is that is so sad. T1 are by far the best team in the world at getting into the enemy jungle and making the enemy jungle feel very sad about life. Now you're losing plates in bot side anyway. This is so bad. <laughs> That's a fair point, Al. That's a fair point. Okay, so now Faker has doubles, so and he and a t he has doubles. He has a tier. He has tier two boots. Like he is so happy in this game now. 
I say this knowing that Faker, I think he does get solo killed some point after this, which is hilarious to me because there's no way in hell he should get solo killed from this point in the game. Three biscuits, tier two boots. I don't care that he doesn't have flash. He should never die here now. <laughs> so I want to see how that happens. So yeah, gets in with a combo. That's good. That's nice. Ona once again just going into the enemy jungle, making things really awkward. Zach can apparently take Krug, uh, take um, Grubs for free, which is kind of terrifying because this champion does too many things for free already. Okay, but but like, how does he die here, man? <laughs> You have two kill- like, oh, does he flash over the minefield? Right, he flashes over the minefield. Oh, come on, Faker, buddy, you have ta- Dude, you have teleport. Just go back, go home. Don't die for three minions. For God's sake. <laughs> Which team do you think has the potential to take the win against Genji other than T1? Um... Me and HLE are not looking awful. Um... Maybe peanut, just as domestic peanut things. What else? Hmm. Depends if D plus actually stand up and stop inting for a while. Ah, uh, yeah. Carry is looking for level six. He would have got level six off of like one more minion. Yeah. Look at this. If they killed the wave, he gets level six. That's really good knowledge from Carry to know that he would get six, but just sad that he can't get it. Again, T1 going into the enemy jungle and making Gideon's life absolute hell, and Faker gets his 3,000th kill. God damn, it's a lot of kills. That's insane. Hanwha, Viper is not. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think it's actually yeah. I mean, you have you have Viper and you have um, then you have um, Peanut, who are both very very good, at least at a domestic level for Peanut. Internationally, obviously that's changed, but um, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, they have Zekka, don't get me wrong, but, like, there's every chance that one series, he's not not bad, and it works. Okay, so what happens here? Does he just flash over the combo? Ah, yeah, so Faker, he actually never uses his jump, so Faker just disrespects that he doesn't need to jump in for the kill. Because if you connect on your jump with Tristana onto a bomb target, then it does, like, an extra 50% damage or something. Or, yeah, something like that. A good, a good percentage. It's either twenty-five percent or fifty percent. I forget which one, but it's a lot. Yeah, but then this is this is the Avengers assembling. It's really, really hard for, for them to for like anyone to be anywhere out of position on Vision. If you're on Vision, and people have alts near you, you just die. Okay, they're all running onto Carrier. They use the Varasol as well. Oh, this is good. At least Karis manages to get into the enemy jungle. Karis, uh, oh, Carrier dies. I mean, fair play actually. Fair play to the TVT. They they make good. They they do some good work with that. And he doesn't have a teleport to get back to lane. Zess is, is he's just punted. Oh my god, they're actually getting three kills in a row after the solo kill in mid as well. <laughs> yeah, this is a big turnaround. All right, fair play. The so Tiwan are actually behind in gold after what was a really annoying early game from them against particularly Gideon. Delight the goat support. I mean, Delight's fucking great. Yeah, Delight's fantastic. Yeah. He's 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 very very good, especially on Rakan. I mean, that's the that's that's the basic level. If you know something about Delight, you know that you ban his Rakan. That's the basic stuff. Even I, as a lowly LPL caster, know this. Not that it mattered versus BLG, but uh, yeah. Well played from Sanford and Polo, actually. They, they've really punished um, Kerry and Guma when they're looking for certain breakpoints. They punish them for greeting for like certain minions, which is nice. <laughs> so what does this mean with the extra gold going over? Let's... Who's got a lot of gold? You have the 280 carries with a lot of gold. One item on Gideon, he's gone for Protobalt first, which is... A little interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's okay for, like, protobelting and then jumping for- Oh my god, Karis, buddy. Okay. Figure gets tagged, is that enough? Ooh. Oh, man, you know what, bro? We're giving a pretty decent shot. Holo Radiance and Cassante, sad to see. Well, welcome to the chat, Sinislo. Um, and thanks to the follow, I appreciate it. 
Yeah, I think, um... I think going for just sitting on Barmies and going towards Kernic Rookern is far better, right? It's far better. I, I, yeah. Because at least that way, between waves, you have like an extra 300 health to work with. You don't need the full Hollow Radiance. You're not looking to solo kill the Zac. You're never going to solo kill the Zac. And at that point, that means that you should just go for, um... Barmies, sit on the Barmies. Yes, you do need that, don't get me wrong. But then you just go into your full first MR item after that point. Yeah, I agree. That's that's a fair point. I think that's a good shout out. I don't think that's the the that's not the death of this game, <laughs> but it doesn't help for sure. The thing is, so actually, this is this is important to talk about as well. I'm just going to talk pause it very quickly, right? So you have two kills on a Tristana, three kills on Natalia, and you think, okay, that's fairly even, whatever. Um. But the thing is, if you're building either Rod of Ages or Seraphs, getting early gold means more to you, because it means that you start stacking earlier. Now, Faker's gonna have an early Seraph, so which is really annoying for the side of Bro, comparative to what he had, unless he didn't have, you know, an extra 1200 gold from kills. Or, or something close to that, an extra 1000-ish gold. 1100 or so. Yeah. And this also doesn't change the fact that, um... Bro are still facing up against a composition where if you are out of position, they pull their ultimates and kill you immediately. So they need to be the ones keeping the tempo. They need to be doing this, actually. Grouping up and looking for plays onto T1 before T1 can pull the trigger on them. And they've tried to do that. But then even, you can, you can see even here, right? Like, um, there was a chance that you could isolate the bot lane there without Samba having flash. There was a chance that Faker could pull an ult and uh, force a play. And that would have been really awkward for them. Morgan stepping on the blob, stopping some of the regen. Oh, hey, Lumpkin, how's it going? Game one was fun. Game one was fun. All right, I will. thank you. Yeah, no, I, I really enjoyed doing getting back on cast kind of in an unofficial way. Because um, Sam and I are the only two brother casters in esports, in major esports. So you're not going to see this experience anywhere else. So, Well, this is what we were talking about in terms of being able to pull the trigger. But Faker's not in position for this. Faker is just not in... Wait, guys, what are you doing? Faker's not here. If he hits that Q, does that even change anything? No, I don't think it does. Does it? So then he CC'd here. Ah, uh, maybe it... Maybe it does. Because if he's here perma CC'd, maybe Faker can then ult down into River. That's actually quite a long distance that he's managed to get across. If he hits the Q, it makes it a lot easier. But as soon as that... As soon as he flashes out, just leave. Just leave, folks. Because now Samva is in, in range to DPS. But like, the idea is fine. The play is correct. It's just the execution is poor, which is not normally what you say about um, T1. Doesn't catch Polo, who knows that the ult's likely coming in. That's good. Huh. So the play is correct there, I think, because you have the Talir ult on call. But they just, they don't play around, because it's a rank 1 to Lear ult, the range is not that high. You can't allow him to get that much extra gap clo- or gap extension, I suppose. Escape, disengage. Hang on, what do you mean by drug cheat? <laughs> what does drug cheat mean, stat guy zero? Yeah, Poe, thanks for the follow, appreciate it. <laughs> What is John Jones? What is a John Jones? <laughs> what is a John... Tell me. Oh, an MMA fighter? Oh, right, okay. Right, okay. I don't know what the context is. You know what, I'm just gonna leave you... I'm gonna leave you guys to talk about that. Because... <laughs> I, I don't know shit about that, folks. Okay, so we have Faker going towards... Um, Zonya's second, which I think makes a lot of sense. Seraph Zonya's... Um, this this um, Tristana can never really kill you again. Gumi's gone for Umbral instead of Yomu's, which makes sense. I think with this composition, T1 are looking to force Bro onto really bad periods of vision, and then kind of punish them for ever extending with stuff like the Talia roll. That makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, 
Samba's in a really nice spot though. Three kills on the virus. He can shred through the tanks now, man. Double AD carry is getting getting a lot of gold is scary. Let's slow this down. We'll slow it down. Polly's got hex flash, just use it backwards there. What's the Talia wall gonna look at? Are they gonna contend with this? You need a good Talia wall. Where's that coming in? Faker's looking to push mid lane right now, but he's late to this. 3k on the Herald, taken. Hmm. Faker's late to this play. Really good angle from Zayas though. What happened? Hang on, let's go back to the start of this. Let's go just back to right here. Guma just used a Q on a ward. Which means he won't have it for the initial burst or for the heal onto Ona. He has flat. he has ult as well. Ona has flash and he has ult, but he's going into three people. Zeus is coming right back, and let's let's slow this down. Watch out a half. So the wall's not here just yet. You want the wall a couple of seconds before the Vi goes in if you can help it. So he's just looking for a Q into range of the Herald. To smite it. So he's not looking for an engage, he's looking for the steal. But then he's just stunned into a full combo. Samba starts off with the ult. But he's in his DPS range now. It's a three kill on hit Varus with the engage failing onto him. But then this is important from Zayas. Yeah. Yeah, Varus actually can't play against Zack, by the way, folks. If Zack ever finds the Varus, it's game over. Oh shit. What have I done? Ah, Smith. Ah. Ah. I got my hotkeys wrong. <laughs> yeah, sorry folks. I actually can't show you that gameplay on screen. It's um it's too it's too explicit. Okay. Yeah, I think maybe Faker was a second or two late because he was trying to push out mid lane. I think he maybe should have just dropped the mid wave and came earlier. Guma Q's a turret, so Apollo lives. Oh Guma! It's just the rel, just get the wave! Oh my god. The fact that he queued a ward and then queued the tower in two consecutive plays, Gooba! <laughs> to see Tsai for the <laughs> Because they failed the dive, Gooba dies as well. Oh, come on, folks. Oh, God. Morgan should stay on Zach. Yeah, I don't think they realized how much of a threat he would be. Let's have a look at this replay again. So Morgan stays here. Oh, yeah, Morgan should 100% stay on him. He still has W. He should be. He just should be words. He should just be stopping the Zac from charging his E. That's a huge mistake from Morgan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a huge mistake from Morgan. You're absolutely right. Yeah. He should 100% stay on him. That's a big error. As soon as Zaz gets into the fight, this game's over, man. At this point in the game where you're at kind of like two items, mid-game levels, so annoying. You just use the freaking tower, man. Guma! Oh. If you can't take, if you can't handle T1 at their regular season, you don't deserve them at their world championship. This team, man, they just do weird shit. So he's on vision. Okay. Oh, Zach's found him again. He misses the E, luckily. When's the next E coming out from Zeus? Okay. Uh, Samver actually gets away with absolute frickin' murder for a while here, but you can't walk up to Zach. God damn, that's so much damage. <laughs> I mean, Samver av avoided the initial, the initial E, turns it around onto the Vi, it's just, what do you do as a, what do you do as a, as a Varus? You need someone, you need a, like a Tom Kench for the Varus. You actually need a Varus Tom Kench to survive. And even then, it's, it's sometimes debatable. That's insane to think about. Maybe like an Ivan for the shields or something. Maybe you could go double enchanter. But playing, if we're seeing lots of Varus, I, I actually really agree that this Zac is such a big counter into him. I think that's that's something which a lot of different teams are figuring out now. We've seen it a little bit in, we've seen it a decent amount in LEC. We've seen a game or two in LPL, I think. How many Gen G games did you watch? They look unstoppable to me, to be honest. Not as many as the other teams. <laughs> Um, so, in fact, we could watch it. We could watch a, a, a Gen G series after this. We could watch that. We could do that. Uh, G2 Neko. So, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Nezko. One of those two. I think. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Oh, by the way, I have a VOD review of my G2 Fnatic, um, 
Yeah, of G2 Fnatic on my YouTube. Both regular season and then also their playoff series as well, if you're interested in watching that on my YouTube. I should really get a YouTube link in my Twitch, um, like Twitch chat, I should really get that. But it's there, you can find it. Okay, so, T1, they're making Samva's life hell, which means that a lot of the extra gold on Bro is actually quite hard for them to, um, to utilize. The reason I've not talked so much about this game is because, it's one, it's been a mess, and it's not... Yeah, I, I think that Bro have not really found a way for their double AD carries to stay safe. I think the front line of Bro has not done an awesome job of stopping T1's engage from make, landing on the right targets. Maybe owner, owner notwithstanding, he's been he's been punished, but they haven't been able to punish both owner and Zaius at the same time. Weren't we doing DRX Haiti after this one? Yeah, I was thinking about that. Yeah, that's what I initially said. But was that actually a good series, or was that just um, was it was it actually was it was it a fun series, or was it a good series? Like we can we can have a chat about it after this this game meets its demise. Yeah, I think watching a Genji game or two would probably not be a bad idea. Actually, we'll do that at some point. Hey, Amber, how's it going? Good morning. Yeah, hey, we could do a poll. Yeah, after this game, I'm gonna go get myself a drink, and then we can um, we can vote for the next series because, um, I mean, I went into this game in particular thinking, oh, how are Goomer and Kerry are gonna use the the Scion Center? What what the Scion has done, and I've not talked that much about it, is allowed them to have a front line away from their initiators. God damn, he dies so quick. But what Kerry so. We'll go. We'll we'll rewind back through this fight after it's completed. Um, okay, they actually do manage to punish the first engage this time. That's pretty nice. Do they even kill him? No, they don't. Oof! Bloody hell! So what this scion does? What this scion does is allows you to. Um, so if you engage onto scion, it takes a long time to kill him. Long enough time that Zeus and Ona can find your target. And so now because you have a 6 kill to Leah, and then the Sen has been farming up well too, you can't ignore the enemy backline. So you try and go onto these two, but you have to go through the, Sen the Scion to do that. Whereas on the other side, you can only really punish one of these two engaging threats. Like, the diving threats from Bro are not enough to kill the backline. Because actually the damage is all in the folks which are getting shut down by the, by the, the Vi and the Zek. I know I've kind of been sitting back and laughing at this game a bit more, but the actual analysis is that these two can't get in range to kill the backline, and they need to be part of the... Well, the virus can't be part of the dive. But the people who are diving forward from Bro, they never have damage to kill the backline. If you've got the Cassante and the Gaz and um, the, the Gragas and the um, the Rel, they have to go through a Scion, which is annoying as hell. They have to go through a um, these two items on the on the Talia, the Zanyas and the Seraphs. So then you're left at maybe trying to catch out Goomer, but he's playing at such a long range that it's just never going to happen. Whereas on the other side, you look at the difference in the damage between like a Vi and a Zac going on to the, the AD carries. Like we've seen how many times Samva just cannot play that out. Whereas if you're trying to dive onto the carries of T1, um, you have to get through just a really obnoxious front line whilst also not having the damage to compete. So they teleport in and look at how... <laughs> So Morgan cannot play as the front line. Carrier buys enough space that Goomer is never threatened. So T1, the threat, the threat against T1 is that the first person diving in, if they go too far, is killed. Because the double AD carries do insane damage if they're hitting the right targets. But they can't do that to every single person, which is why we've seen Ona die a lot and then Zeus clean up the fight. This time it's actually Zeus getting his passive pops and then Ona having a threat beyond that too. Hydro, I can hydro, thank you, appreciate it. <clears throat> Thank you for the hydrate, appreciate it. So that's Baron, that should be game. Because they're going to push up with impunity, they have triple tanks slash triple engages to dive you in your base. So you're hoping that T1 makes a boneheaded mistake and like splits across the map and you can pick people off, but they're, they're just responding too quickly. And they have too many ults to follow up, this is so annoying. <laughs> Like, the, the way for them to reposition in a fight with the second Zack E and the Talia all is just way too much. Uh, the Ryanator, thanks for the follow, appreciate it. And Himea. Thanks for the follow, folks. Really appreciate it. 
Hey, Jenny, how's it going? Hey, Bradfig, good to see you. Yeah, so this, um, I mean, the, the Scion Center didn't exactly crush lane. I think they were punished quite well by Samver and Polly, who I actually think had a pretty okay game. It's just, I don't know. <laughs> what do you do against, like, triple tank frontline when you have zero damage to bring onto their backline? What cam do I use? There's some HD. It's a Sony Alpha 6400, and I've got it through a cam link. So it is a 4K camera. I'm only streaming in 1440. Oh, hang on. Hang on. That's so stupid. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. This is what they picked this goddamn combo for. So, watch this. This is the same as what we used to see with Scion Malzahar, where you'd punch a minion with the, the, the E on it. So, oh my god. I remember this now. Oh, we used to see Scion Center for years. I, how did I forget about this? So you hit the center W onto a minion, then then Siren punts the minion into them, and the instant root comes through. Oh, that is so disgusting. Oh my god, that's hilarious. <laughs> that's so stupid. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, Reckless, Mi Reckless Mickey used to play this, you're right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Linus on it, thanks for the follow, I appreciate it. This game is so over, man. This game is so over. I even think that T1 misplayed a lot in the early game. With the three kills on Talia, they should have been a cleaner game, but it doesn't matter. They have a really good understanding of this composition. They have infinite follow-up. And I think that T1's backline was, like, permanently safe. The only people dying this game were occasional tanks that initiated out of order with the rest of their team. Where, like, you want all of your initiators to be threatening at the same time. Um, and I think that Ono was sometimes a little bit early on it, but it doesn't matter. Like, you're still... He's still threatening and then, then um, buys a flash or something like that, which means that Zayas can get on Samper afterwards. Hey, you know how, what you can do to, um, to get away from adverts? You can actually drop a Twitch Prime or you can subscribe. You, can, uh, you do what you want, it's fine. No obligation. God damn, Zach does way too much damage. Um, Nymera, from what you've seen so far, who do you think is the best team? It feels like teams around the world, like BLG are trying to do T1 stuff from last year, while T1 is not abusing double range as much and playing random comps. Oh no, just caught out again, again, just, let me, let me go for that. Wait, what, what happens here? Hey, what happens here? Okay, oh, he just gets pulled back into his team, and yeah, you, the double AD, AD carries do a hell of a lot of work. Who do I think the best team in the world is right now? Um... Hmm. Okay, put it this way. Is it like, if you played a hundred and- if you played- if this one team went up against every other team in the world, who would have the most wins? Oh, that's actually not bad. They actually get onto the backline for once. Does it matter? No, it doesn't. Oh, Guma flashes out of the engage. I mean- in fights like this, this is so annoying because even though you kill one of the carries, Zeus is actually an, has the damage to clean up fights. Quadra for Guma, don't get me, that, that's that's nice, but like the amount of damage with Zeus did is absolutely absurd. What is Zach, man? What is Zach? I'll get back to the best uh, uh, the best team question in a second because that's quite an. It depends how you want to view it, right? Because T1 probably beats every other team in the world except Genji right now. But I think that a team like BLG could beat Genji, much like we saw last year. So then the question is, could BLG beat T1 as well? Uh, well, BLG kind of had a pretty crap last series, but then again, this was a happy game from T1, so how much are we really judging these teams? I really like the compositions which T1 are bringing out. I think that they're innovating really well. Is the, Wait, are the minions actually going to end this game? Are they actually going to... Are they actually going to... Do they need... To, I mean, you have Faker on a Talia. Talia could just ult in and at, not auto the Nexus twice and kill it. Oh, don't tell me the game's still going. Okay, alright, the wave click comes through. We haven't seen LPL on 14.2? No, that's not true. We've seen LPL on 14.2, but we haven't seen LCK on 14.2. They only played on 14.1b before the break, but um, LPL had one week, or like um, two days, or three, three days worth of series on 14.2. Is this a fine? I remember one team got fine for this. No, I don't think so. I think they just... No, I don't think that's a fine. 
I mean, this is T1 pushing beyond their safe vision, so that's... Yeah. Good good Zonius from Faker, but then he's in the DPS range of the double AD carries. The problem is, like, how do the double AD carries ever actually carry a fight? You're never getting to the carries. You're barely even getting through the tank front line. Because you can't auto-attack versus Zac if he's permanently CCing you. Alright. Exactly. How do you play as this Varus? You actually just can't play. T1's engage range is absolutely nuts, man. Absolutely nuts. Oh, sorry. There are some Varus first picks still. Yeah, there's some Varus. Sorry. Yeah, I missed that comment. Yeah, yeah. Varus has been first picked on um on 14-2. Okay, so I'm probably going to cut and stitch this together for YouTube, so you can watch that again on my YouTube if you want to see this again, plus people who just don't watch the live streams, which is fine. Um, and then we're going to go into a different game.